Hey, welcome in everybody to the Sports Fanatic Sportscast. This is going to be our Philadelphia Phillies season recap, not the year that we wanted to see capped out for the boys, especially due to how good Bryce Harper did, Zach Wheeler did, and Ranger Suarez was the saving grace, basically Jesus of this team this year. But, you know, couldn't, couldn't be. Uh, couldn't come to the end. He wasn't hip just like Ashton Kutcher, but he was the Jesus of the team. Obviously, we're doing the Phillies, like I said, even though Andrew's decked out in his football gear on this football Sunday. But how are you doing today, Andrew? I'm doing well. It's a uh, busy time here. Yeah, I'm working in athletics, but it's been going going well. Uh, surviving and, and living pretty good so far. So, um, I mean, obviously, like you said, I wish we could be talking about a better Phillies season. But I'm, I'm excited to break this down and uh, get back to some of these videos as we move on. Yeah, same here, same here. I've been doing a lot of stuff solo, which is fun, but it's always more fun to do it with somebody because you get <laughs> off of somebody. So it's nice to have you. It's nice to have you back for sure. But the first thing I want to piggyback off of you is this is really a very damning set. Um, the Phillies had 51 games this year in which the offense failed to score more than two runs. Um, the, the rest of the stat goes on, yet folks want to blame the bullpen, whereas the offense, I don't agree with the guys much on that because their bullpen still sucks other than a select solace of people. But in terms of the offense, um, you can't fully blame the bullpen. That I agree on. But you're not going to win if you have a bad bullpen combined with scoring less than two runs a game in 51 games, are you not? No, nah, and it seems like they're just never in sync. And you bring up a good point. Obviously, that's an alarming number. Obviously, you get the best pitching in the league, and you're going to lose games if you're not scoring two runs. But it, it seemed like at times this year, I mean, the offense was all full power, and they were scoring six runs a game for a week straight. Because I remember there was, a, there was a stretch where I think I sent you, uh, or maybe it was in our group um, before, but it was like the Phillies had the most runs scored from, the, I think it was that beginning of June to the middle of July to the break. And like just like something like that was crazy, and then the bullpen faltered there, and then then you had the bullpen pitch extremely well for a few weeks, but then the offense couldn't score. So it was just that was one of the issues I thought was there's never consistency from multiple different parts of this team, and they were never the same at the same time was a major issue. Yeah, and then of course, um, in terms of that, since we're on the offense and the um not scoring two runs in 51 games, I think a large part that plays into that, particularly since the Phillies lineup was one of the worst against left-handed pitching this year is the fact that Reese Hoskins wasn't in your lineup for a foreseeable amount of the season. Yes. What, what effect do you think in terms of one, the division standings as the season rounded out, but two, just in terms of the offense production would have helped better for if Reese Hoskins actually stayed healthy. Listen, I, I everyone who watches us uh, knows I'm a big giant Reese Hoskins fan, and I think this proved it with how much the offense faltered down the stretch. I think obviously you're going to sit here, we're going to win a lot more games. If Reese Hoskins is in this lineup, especially against those lesser teams, and I can sit here and say, yes, I think the Phillies would have made the playoffs if Hoskins would have played. Uh, the full year, I think you do beat some of those teams. You're going to have a better team down the stretch, and you do make the playoffs. But here's the counter to that: the Braves are missing Ronald Acuna Jr. The Braves are missing uh, some another outfielder. The Braves are missing uh, Mike Soroka all year. Like that, the, the, it wasn't like the, the Braves were, didn't have their injuries. I mean, they were missing arguably an MVP when he's fully healthy. So as much as we want to sit here and say, yeah, we would have made the playoffs when Hoskins, well, we can sit here and say that because Acuna w was out, and that's why we would have made the playoffs. But if they're both healthy. Who knows what would have happened? So, I guess I want to say that. What was that? Braves technically had two MVPs out, but one is just yeah. two off the field. Uh, and exactly. So, listen, I want to sit here and say that. And I do think if Hoskins was playing, we would have made the playoffs in terms of with the Kuna being out. But in the end, I think uh, with the schedule that was in front of us, without Hoskins, we still should have been able to make a run and make the playoffs. And we left the opportunities there to get that done. I mean, we wasted an MVP year from Harper. I do believe in a few weeks when that's announced, Bryce Harper will win the award. Uh, you, I don't think he's going to win, but you you wasted a Cy Young-type season from Zach Wheeler. I think he's going to get beat out for that. But it was still a Cy Young caliber season as he will get votes for that award. And then you, you wasted, arguably, Ranger Suarez could win comeback part of the year. I mean, missed all of last year basically with COVID and everything. So he should he's going to be eligible for that award. So you're basically going to have three three big award candidates. You'll probably win one of them. But you wasted a lot of career years from this team. And, and it's a shame to see this happen. And we'll see what moves are going to be made in the offseason because 
Well, let me tell you, the way Dave Dabrowski is talking already, it's going to be one busy offseason for the Phillies, and uh, I expect a lot to happen. So we'll see what happens. But uh, ah. yeah, I think it's going to be an offseason the first time we actually see John Middleton have somebody stand up to him, too. Yes, and, absolutely. Like, and I think that's huge. Yeah, like because he has the foundation to stand on. He did it with the Tigers. He did it with Boston when they didn't cap him. Where the, he openly admitted in his press conference that John Middleton capped him for this year, yeah. which kind of seemed different. Because if this was in Boston, I could have saw him going out and getting the Kennedys and the Gibsons of the world. But I feel like the Phillies then also would have been the team to say, let's go get Schwarber or let's go get let's go get Duvall. Let's go get Solaire because we need to fill in and get an extra bat where here he only fixed one problem, which seemed kind of odd since that's not how Dombrowski's known to operate. But now now it makes sense because he was capped by the owner. Yeah, I heard uh, I heard his comments. I was waiting for uh, an hour later where he says uh, Dave Dabrowski's fired by the Phillies because of his comments. Because like you said, Milton's fine. I used to having those people call him out for that. He's had Matt Klintak there. He's had Sam, obviously Sam Foltz still there, but he's been in higher up. So John Milton probably isn't used to having people calling him out like that. So we'll see what happens here. But uh, I'm, I'm excited in terms of what's to come this offseason. I think it is going to be a busy offseason for this team. You're going to have a full offseason of Dombrowski. But we'll save the offseason for, for another video. Let's, get, let's jump back probably to recap in the season and, and where we went wrong. Yeah, we'll do that um, as we do an uh, offseason whenever we throw out that video. But you did bring up Ranger Suarez. So while you did that, I will read this stat that Ryan Spader tweeted at the end of the season. Uh, which is Suarez finished the season with a 136 ERA, which is the lowest in MLB history by a pitcher with at least 10 games started and 20 games in relief. So, as you said, you blew not even a career season, but a historically great season by a pitcher that came in and performed really well. And then we all had the career season, which also on some counts, like strikeout numbers, was historically great. But Ranger Suarez did something nobody else has ever done. And still, and the big thing with him is you couldn't pick him up a lot in his starts. Like you found ways to win games that he started, but he barely got the win because you would always he would come out of the game and then you would score in the seventh inning or later. Like the Phillies never found a way. His win loss numbers should also be a lot better because they never found a way to pick him up. I know that's not a number people look at as much now, but they should definitely be a lot better because they always scored later in games if they ended up winning them. He was in. Or they just didn't score in general, and then they didn't win the game. So, exactly. And I think that's what it's going to be big is for this team to realize. I mean, you had Ranger Suarez go from a closer to, or excuse me, a middle reliever to a closer, then to a starter, and you wasted that. I'll tell you what. Where I think this team went wrong was the trade deadline. You could have made moves at the trade deadline. You failed to do it. You look at what the Braves did. They made move after move to rebuild that outfield that they lost, and it helped them make the postseason. We talked, and that was the most disappointing thing, which we talked about Klentok making the moves, and then we finally had a, a guy here that probably would have made moves, but then obviously he tells us he was handicapped this year, so that's why the moves weren't made, which then all makes sense. So I, will, I would say you lost this season probably at the deadline, not making moves when you got outbid by a team like the Braves. Because there was guys there. You could have got a starter. You could have got depth uh, on this team. You you could have got a third baseman. Obviously, Bone was struggling, and, and they probably have been talking about moving him down for a while. So you could have got a third baseman. You could have upgraded center field. I mean, you look at the A's, they got Stylo Marte. So, again, I think where this team lost it was about the Oscar break. And, obviously, um, there was hope. So, obviously, we're fighting for the division. I'm not saying that's like – that was – at the Oscar, at the trade deadline, it was like, okay, the season's over. No, I'm saying, like, when it's looking back on it, that's where it was. That's the difference because the Braves won a lot of their games because some of those moves they picked up in the Jorge Solar and uh, all the other guys and Eddie Rosario. Adam, yeah, Adam Duvall. Yeah, Eddie Rosario is a guy we, yeah. we just highlighted the two big ones in Soler and Duvall. They also picked up Rich Rod from the uh, Pirates um, out of the bullpen there. So, yeah, the Braves, the Braves did everything they had to do and really brought in the people they had to where, obviously, we're blaming John Middleton for this, not Dave Dombrowski, since we found out he was capped off. But either way, it's still someone's fault why you weren't able to counteract the Braves. Because the Braves weren't in three outfielders. They didn't need three. They needed to bring no. in two to fix the uh, holes they had because they lost two outfielders. Just for the heck of it, they went, oh, let's get Eddie Rosario also. 
So, I mean, like, you could have easily got one of those guys. Like, there was a bunch of teams. The Dodgers do those trades every year. Oh, just for the heck of it, let's bring Trey Turner into the team. What the hell do we need <laughs> Trey Turner for? Like, but, so, yeah, I let's, mean. Let's just replace Trevor Bauer with Max Scherzer. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, Trevor Bauer's an idiot that did something off the field. Let's just bring in Max Scherzer. Yeah, like, Let's bring in a Cy Young winner and, and arguably an MVP candidate. That's, that's it. That's all we got. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I mean, that's like. The Phillies are supposed to be – that's the thing. Obviously, you're never going to be as big as the Dodgers because they're owned by Magic and all these people that have tr- trillions, probably some of them almost, if not if they're not millions and billions of dollars combined. But you're supposed to be a team that at least shows some solace of com- comparing yourself to Boston and to the Yankees and to the other big market team because you're supposed to be a big market team. And even this year, Boston – didn't make that many trades at the deadline, but they figured out a way to outsmart you and still make the playoffs, even while collapsing in the second half and making it into the yeah. wild. Court. So, like, you you have to be able to find a way. You have to have that mentality, like the, the old saying, if there's a will, there's a way. The Phillies never seem to be able to come together, like you said earlier in the video, and find that willpower to be able to keep pushing them through adversity and issues their team has like other teams did, including the Braves, obviously, which were a big team that did that. And especially the biggest team that did that was the St. Louis Cardinals, who went hot as a firecracker at the end of the season. And Adam Wainwright turned into his prime self. again. So, I mean, like, you got to figure out certain things here and do it. I think a big thing, um, Zach, you know Zach, our friend uh, Zach, when I was talking on PlayStation, he brought up the Phillies don't have a winning culture. Because you don't have the Brandon Crawfords. You don't have anybody that can say, like the Sixers brought bringing people in different years, usually that can say, look, I've been in a winning situation. You got to do X, Y, Z. Like, and the Eagles did that in their Super Bowl season. You got to do X, Y, Z in order to be successful. Like, if you're Bryce Harper, Bryce Harper's won, but he's never won. He's never done anything in the playoffs. So, like, he's a good well, player. The, pro- the problem is, I guess you didn't bring in enough of those guys. Because you brought in the likes of Andrew McCutcheon. You brought in the likes of Dita Gregorius. Those are the guys you were hoping that made those those moves. Um, you look at the bullpen, you bring in a veteran, Archie Bradley. You bring in, um, uh, who was it? I guess you make the trades for Gibson and Kennedy. And I'm not saying they're, they're complete winners, but like my point is, um, I think that's what they, they, they relied a lot on DD and McCutcheon. But I don't think, to your point, that was enough uh, to be had there. Because you have veterans, but like you said, I mean, JT... Has he ever played it in a playoff game? I don't think so. Harper hasn't won a playoff series. So, I mean, you Harper, don't have guys that. Wheeler, was he a part of that Mets run? He was – the one year he was injured. The other year, I'm not sure. I think, yeah, I think the year he got hurt was the year they went to the World Series. So, even that's not much experience. But, uh, so, I mean, like, to your point, you have veteran names on the roster, but they're not necessarily winners like that. So, that's a that's an area you probably hope, and that's why I mean I'll continue to say it, one of the biggest mistakes this organization made was getting rid of Josh Harrison. And I'm not just saying that. Obviously, 2020 vision here, you see him do well in the World Series, but that, I mean that was a huge mistake. I mean, me and you were all over that when they cut him. Like I remember when we signed him to the spring training deal, we loved that move. And then you got rid of him. That was a better you could have had on this team. Didn't we have Tony? We had Tony Watson too, didn't we? The lefty. Yeah, we had Tony Watson. We cut him yeah. at the beginning of this year. Um, so. That they, and that's the most frustrating is they, they try to sign some of these veterans, but they don't win on any of them because they, I don't know. I don't know. But hopefully with the new, uh, again, hopefully a new group here moves the, the offseason forward. But it's uh, it was a frustrating frustrating season for sure. Um, I mean, obviously, I think we both pinpoint. I think Didi had was one of the most disappointing years uh, out of this team. Nola was pie up there. I'd say Nola for the pitcher and – D.D. Pai as the, the hitter was probably the two most uh, disappointing. And then I think my most surprising, obviously, it has to be Ranger Suarez. And then uh, it's going to sound weird to say, like Bryce Harper, because obviously we expect him, but the year he had was incredible. Like the year he had only, there's only been like three other players in the league to do that. So like, I'm not surprised Harper had a strong year, but to the level it was is where it becomes surprising. Yeah, because he was at the level of Barry, and we all know what Barry did in order to help that level. So um, he was at that level, and that that's definitely um, saying something there. But 
I think the Phillies, like the thing I was getting at with that veteran presence was like, say, for example, Brandon Crawford would have been a free agent if the Giants didn't resign him. I think the Phillies honestly would have been better off saying, Didi Gregorius, you're getting traded for whatever we could get, even if it's a player to be named later. And then they would have signed Crawford because the first thing he does when he comes in is, hey, boys, here are my rings. This is the shit you got to do to win the rings. And if you don't do it, you're going to be sitting over here playing golf and bowling in the offseason like you've been doing every offseason. So, uh, I mean, that that's kind of um, where I think this team is at. I think they need somebody that's been, or if you didn't have a catcher, we obviously do, but if you didn't have JT, you could have got Buster or something. If you would have came in, he's reestablishing his career and said, this is how you win. But, like, you got to have, I think, one of those foundation pieces come in and do that. And then that will help you because the Phillies, there's a lot of guys you can get this offseason. Like, Kyle Seeger would be nice and stuff like that. But you also got to get somebody that's been in a winning culture. Like, Adam Duvall, even though he hasn't been deep in the playoffs, would work just because he's bounced around and been in so many different teams winning cultures because he's kind of been a good journey, like one of those journeyman players that actually really produces. Like, he's Mm. been in the poultry he's been in these so he would kind of fit but you got to do something to bring in more of these guys that fit the leadership crop but i think to close out this video in our final four or five minutes here we obviously have to get into um the bullpen and and just uh how that disappointed us again obviously kennedy came in and do all too sharp coonrod was more was good at the beginning of the season then really didn't do a heck of a lot throughout the rest of the season Connor Brogdon, I guess you would say, was probably one of the most consistent guys. He had a 3-4-3 three, three in 56 games, so at least that's like at least pretty solid. And then Bedrosian came up and had one good game and then sucked. So, I mean, you didn't you didn't have a lot here. Jose Alvarado had a pretty bad season for himself. So, uh, you didn't really have a lot going. Bradley also had a down season for himself. He even talked about it on Rose's show, the Rose rotation, about how he doesn't feel the same anymore and has to figure out a pitch of the stuff he has now. So you have that going. So I think the Phillies need to kind of get – the only guy you really got that you would say is a proven reliever in this offseason was Bradley. And even then, that was like a two-year thing, and then he wasn't like as good as he was before that two-year stretch. He was just a good reliever. Where you getting the Coonrods of the world, the Alvarados, bringing in Bedrosian, uh, none of those guys you would say are definite to be able to to affect your team. So I think the Phillies, they need to make. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I think they need to bring in like one of those Melansons of the world in this offseason, or just the guys you know that are veterans for mo- small money or bigger money, like Iglesias, and you just know what you're getting rather than having this crap every year where you bring in guys that have good stuff. But let's be honest. This team developing pitching is like the Flyers were at figuring out goaltenders in the early 2000s. Like, now the Flyers know how to figure out goaltenders. The Phillies in the early 2000s knew how to scout pitching. Now they completely forgot how to scout pitching and can't bring in a pitcher to save their lives. So you got to be able to fix that there. Otherwise, you're never going to have success. If you're not bringing in young pitching to help your team not have to pay all these people, you're never going to be able to have the success. It's like winning. It's like kind of like winning on the quarterback's rookie contract. You see these Dodgers teams, you see the Yankees when they were successful, they always have some young pitching that's really successful mixed in because it saves you money. The Phillies never have that. Other than money. Yeah. I agree with you. I think a veteran reliever would be huge for this team. And like, I think Archie Bradley had a disappointing year uh, for the most part for us. So obviously, had some key moments, but overall, it was pretty disappointing. And hopefully, that's something to change. But they have a decision to make. And I would bring Hector back out of the three if you had to pick one of the three big free agents there. And I think I'd, I'd definitely bring Hector back. I actually agree. I didn't think before the season, or not before the season, mid-season, I would agree with that because Hector Neres is definitely not having one of his sexual seasons. But I was saying that all along in the Facebook ever since he's been having a strong second half. People would be like, we got to get rid of Hector too, of Google. They'll like list the people they want to get rid of. Um, and then I'll say, well, Hector, I, I don't think so, because it, 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 but it depends on value. Obviously, if somebody offers Hector Neres this big contract to close for them, the Phillies probably aren't going to be able to compete with that. But if he's able to, they're able to offer him, we want you to be the setup guy. We want you to like convince him this is the best role for you, too. I think he'll take that because yeah. we think the closer role ain't the best role for him. So that's what you got to do. And I think Dombrowski is the better guy to do that. Not the best. 
he's definitely the better guy to do that than Matt Glentak because he's convinced other people before to stay with his team. So I think that will work out better there. But to close out this video, to have some negatives and positives, you already gave your three most disappointing uh, people. So I'll just ask for your three um, positives. But for me, I think the three most disappointing people, with the caveat of, like I said, I would also just trade him at this point. Is uh, D.D. Gregorius had a disappointing season. It sounds like you're going to go after one of the shortstops. So why keep D.D. as a backup for that money? Um, Aaron Nola had a really disappointing season. That one I would be a little bit weary of, though, because I feel like Nola could bounce back more. I wouldn't just trade him after one disappointing season. Um, and then when it comes to the rest, the rest is just the overall offense. Yeah, I, I agree. Um, 